Hi. The video you're about to watch may and probably will contain scenes, scenarios, and language of a highly adult nature. So stop watching if you're under the age of 18 and go watch me unbox something. In other words, viewer discretion is advised. All right, now that the kids are out of the room, hey, 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 what is up, guys? This is Couch Potato Mike back with you for another chapter of Freed. I forget what number. What is it? What am I on? 24? Yeah, 24. I need to watch my own YouTube channel. I'd keep track of it better that way. But we're on to chapter 24 of Freed by E.L. James. Uh, last chapter was short. This one's also going to be short. But don't worry, guys. Don't feel jilted by the short chapters. Because the next chapter is going to be insanely long. Uh, so before we get right into this, I want to remind you guys to subscribe. Because um, I'm asking you to really nicely. No, we're on the drive for 300 subs. And after that, sky's the limit, guys. So help me get to 300 subs by August the 8th. And uh, you could win... An autographed copy of Freed by E.L. James. Not autographed by her, no. Autographed by me. I don't know her personally. That'd be awesome, though. Wouldn't that be great if I could get her as a guest on this? Yeah, I have no I have no clout, so. Maybe if I get to 300 subs, I'll still have no clout, but I'll be happier. Anyway, getting on to the book. Oh, yeah, and ring the bell icon and uh, give me a thumbs up because it helps out with that uh, pesky YouTube algorithm. Yeah, I know. Get on with the book. All right, so uh, Thursday, August the 25th, 2011. It's pre-dawn and my wife is curled up beneath the covers. Beside her on the floor is the remains of a cable tie. I pick it up smirking, remembering last night, and slip it into my pants pocket. Fun times. Leaning over her, I catch a hint of her scent... Anna and sex, the most seductive perfume in the world. I plant a gentle kiss on her forehead. Too early, she grumbles. Damn, I've woken her. And I know from experience that Anna is not a fan of the early morning. I'll see you tomorrow night, I whisper. Don't go, she says sleepily. And she's so tempting. I have to, I stroke her cheek. Miss me. I will. She gives me a sleepy smile and puckers her lips. I grin, an early morning goodbye kiss from my girl. Bye, I whisper against her lips, and reluctantly I leave her to sleep. From the back of the car, I send Anna an email while Ryan drives Taylor and me to Boeing Field. <clears throat> from Christian Gray, subject, miss you already. August 25th, 2011, 432. To Anastasia Gray. This is Gray. You were adorable this morning. Behave while I'm away. I love you. Christian Gray, CEO, Gray Enterprises Holdings, Inc. Captain Stefan and First Officer Bailey are on hand, and soon we're airborne for NYC. I strip down in the small bedroom, hoping to catch an hour or so of sleep. As I lay down, I recall our evening. Anna and I went to the Seattle Assistance Union Gala. She looked elegant in her pale pink dress and second chance earrings. She looked even more elegant when I undressed her last night. She should be with me now. I close my eyes, and my mind drifts to our honeymoon night on board this Gulf Stream. Hmm, I hope to dream of my wife. I wake when we're about an hour out of New York, and feeling refreshed, dress quickly. Taylor is in the main cabin, eating what looks like a ham and cheese croissant. Good morning, sir. Hi, breakfast, great. Did you get some sleep? Taylor nods, looking his usual immaculate self. I did, thank you. I take my seat as the captain joins us. Sleep well, sir? Stefan asks. Yes, thanks. Everything okay, I ask? We're being rerouted to JFK. There's been an incident at Teterboro. An incident? As far as I know, it's nothing major. It's just hit our landing time. This will give me less time at GEH fiber optics, I say to Taylor. I've been in touch with the ground crew at Shelter and we're rerouting your car to te from Teterboro, Stephen, Stephen says. Good. Will you get the Gulf Stream to Teterboro after we land? It's more convenient to leave from there. I'll see what I can do. Stephen smiles and heads back into the cockpit. Forty minutes later, we land at JFK. As we taxi to the terminal, I check my emails. There's one from Anna. From Anastasia Gray, subject, behave yourself, August 25th, 2011, 903 to Christian Gray. Let me know when you land. I'll worry until you do. 
and I shall and I shall behave. I mean, how much trouble can I get into with Kate? Anastasia Gray, editor, SIP. Kate, I imagine she can get into a lot of trouble with Kate. The second time I met Miss Cavanaugh, Anna was inebriated. That's how we spent our first night together. Shit, I press call. Anna St Gray. It's such a pleasure to hear her voice. Hi. Hi, how was your flight? Long, what are you doing with Kate? We're just going out for a quiet drink. Out? With Hyde at large? Fuck. Sawyer and the new woman, Prescott, are coming to watch over us, she says sweetly. Then I remember. I thought Kate was coming to the apartment. She is, after a quick drink. I sigh. Why didn't you tell me? I'm not in Seattle. If something happens to them, to her, and I'm not there, I'll never forgive myself. Christian will be fine. I have Ryan, Sawyer, and Prescott here. It's a quick drink. I've seen her only a few times since you and I met. Please, she's my best friend. Anna, I don't want to keep you from your friends, but I thought she was coming back to the apartment. She sighs. Okay, we'll stay in. Only while this lunatic is out there, please. I've said okay, she mutters, and I know by the tone of her voice she's exasperated. I chuckle, relieved that she's reverting to type. I always know when you're rolling your eyes at me. Look, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to worry you. I'll tell Kate. Good, I blow out of breath. I can go about the rest of my day and not worry about her. Where are you? On the tarmac at JFK. Oh, so you just landed. Yes, you asked me to call the moment I landed. Well, Mr. Gray, I'm glad one of us is punctilious. Mrs. Gray, your gift for hyperbole knows no bounds. What am I going to do with you? I'm sure you'll think of something imaginative. You always do, she whispers. Are you flirting with me? Yes, she sounds breathless, and even from this far away and over the phone, her voice is arousing. I grin. I'd better go. Anna, do as you're told, please. The security team knows what they're doing. Yes, Christian, I will. I sense more eye rolling. I'll see you tomorrow evening. I'll call you later. To check up on me? Yes. Oh, Christian, she chides me. Au revoir, Mrs. Gray. Au revoir, Christian. I love you. Hearing her say those three words will never get old. And I you, Anna. Neither of us hangs up. Hang up, Christian, she murmurs. You're a bossy little thing, aren't you? You're a bossy little thing. Mine, I whisper. Do as you're told. Hang up. Yes, sir, she purrs and hangs up. And the disappointment is real, Anna. I, take a, I type a quick email. From Christian Gray, subject Twitching Palms, August 25th, 2011, 1342, 1342 EDT, to Anastasia Gray. Mrs. Gray, you were as entertaining as ever on the phone. I mean it. Do as you're told. I need to know you're safe. I love you. Christian Gray, CEO, Gray Enterprises Holdings, Inc. The plane pulls to a stop outside the terminal. Our car is waiting for us on the tarmac. It's time to head to the Flatiron District and rally the troops. I load the tedious drive from JFK to Manhattan. The traffic is always gridlocked, and even when it's moving, it's slow. That's why I prefer to travel from Teterboro. I occupy myself with emails until I glance out of the car window. We're driving through Queens on the expressway, heading to the Midtown Tunnel. And there she is, Manhattan. There's something magical about her skyline. I've not been to New York for a few months. Well, since before I met Anna, and I know I must bring her here soon. She's never been before. If I only to see the iconic view. We head straight to the GEH Fiber Optics Division, which is based in the old building on 22nd Street. We pull up outside and I can feel the bustling energy of the city. It's invigorating as I step out of the car into the Manhattan throng. I'm hyped for my first meeting of the day. The engineering team blows me away. Young, creative, energetic. I feel at home here. Over a long lunch of sandwiches and beer, I tell them how their technology is going to revolutionize Kavanaugh Media's operation and how they'll work and how the work they're doing now is vital to the future proofing Kavanaugh's expansion plans. His will be the first major media outlet to use their technology, and when I show them how we intend to deploy their expertise in other fields, they're all buzzing with excitement. What Roz was right, I needed to do this. Hassan, who is now the senior vice president of the company, is smart, young, and driven. He reminds me of myself. He's far superior to Woods, an inspiring, an inspiring and worthy successor with vision and drive. One only has to see the premises that Woods has inflicted on the, his team to know he had short-term, narrow perspective. What was he thinking? 
While the reception area is remarkably upscale and frankly pretentious, the offices are cramped, shabby, and in need of substantial refurbishment. We need to relocate. I've instructed Rachel Morris, their logistics chief, to get on that. She's keen to do so, which is great, but it's no wonder morale is low. The place is grim. I email Roz and ask her to go through the lease to see if we can get out before the end of the term, which is another two years to run. When I leave, it's after 6 p.m. and we're behind schedule. I have just enough time to get to my apartment in Tribeca, change into my tux, and then head out again to the Telecommunications Alliance Organization fundraiser near Union Square. In the car, I try to call Anna, but I can't get a signal. Hell. The irony is not lost on me. I'll try again later. The event, as I expected, is convivial enough, and it gives me a chance to network with fellow senior executives and entrepreneurs in my field. But yesterday, I attended a charity gala in Seattle with Anna, and it was more enjoyable for that reason alone. While the gathered guests enjoys canapes and cocktails, I call her once more, but her phone goes to voicemail. I'm about to leave a message when I'm interrupted by the host, Dr. Alan Michaels, who's delighted to see me. At 9.30 p.m. during the entree, Taylor sidles up to me. Sir, Mrs. Gray is having a drink with Kate Cavanaugh at the Zigzag Cafe. Really? Anna said she would go back to the apartment. I check my watch. It's 6.30 p.m. in Seattle. Who's with her? Sawyer and Prescott. Okay, maybe it's just one drink. Let me know when she leaves. She said she would stay at home. Why would she do this? She knows I'm concerned about her welfare. Hyde is at large. He's obviously crazy and unpredictable. My mood sours and I find it difficult to concentrate on the conversation that floats around me. I'm sitting at a table occupied by some of the titans of our industries and their wives and a husband in one case. We are here to raise money to provide technology for schools in less privileged and underserved communities across the country. But there's only nine of us at our table and one empty seat. My wife is conspicuous by her absence. She's also absent from our home. Where's your wife this evening? Callista Michaels asks me. Seated on my left, she's the organizer of the event and Dr. Michaels' wife. She's older, maybe in her late 50s, and dripping in diamonds. She's in Seattle. At a fucking bar. Shame she couldn't come tonight, she says. She works, and she enjoys her job. Oh, how quaint. What does she do? I grit my teeth. She's in publishing, and I wish she were here, or I were back in Seattle. My mood grows bleaker. My sirloin and with Bernays sauce doesn't taste quite as good as it did. It's weird. I've always attended these events without a date, and now I don't know what I'm possessed me to accept the invitation without Anna. Well, I thought Anna would come with me. Though, now that I think about it, she was a little bored at the benefit we attended yesterday. And tonight she's out drinking with Kate. Having fun. Shit. Every time I've known her to go, known them to go out together, Anna's had too much to drink. The first night we slept together in Portland, she was so drunk she passed out in my arms. She was totally inebriated when she got home after a bachelorette party. An image of her naked in bed, her arms beckoning me, her sweet, seductive tone calls to me. You can do anything you want to me. Fuck. It's always when she's out with Kavanaugh. Keep it together, Gray. The security team is with her. What harm could she come to? Hide. He's out there somewhere and he wants revenge. I don't know. He's a maniac. I look up at Taylor who is standing on the other side of the room. He shakes his head. She's still out. She's still drinking. With Kavanaugh. I'm dragged back into the now and the conversation about conflict minerals and reliable sources of ethically mined materials. After the delicious and frankly comforting dark chocolate tort, I look up at Taylor again. He shakes his head. Hell! That's time for how many drinks? I hope she's had something to eat. Excuse me, I have to make a call. I leave the table and call Anna from the lobby. She doesn't pick up. I try her again. No answer. I try her once more. Still no answer. Fuck! I text her. Where the hell are you? She should be home. Or here. And I know I'm being petulant, but she won't even pick up my calls. I storm back into the ballroom where the charity auction is about to begin. I listen to the first two lots. Both involve golf. Fuck this. I write a check for $100,000 and hand it to Mrs. Michaels. I am sorry, Callista, but I have to go. Thank you for hosting a lovely evening. I'll pledge the same again for next year. It's a worthy cause. 
Christian, that's so generous. Thank you. I get up to leave, as does she, and she kisses me on both cheeks, which I'm not expecting. Good night, I say to Callista and shake her husband's hand. I tailor at the edge of the room, and I think he's already calling the car. Even with its high ceilings and great views over the city, the place suddenly feels claustrophobic, and I'm grateful when we get outside into the balmy evening heat of New York. Sir, the car will be a couple of minutes. Okay, she's still there at the zigzag? Yes, sir. Let's go home. Taylor t tilts his head. Tribeca? No, Seattle. He stares at me, his face giving nothing away, but I know he thinks I'm crazy. I sigh. Yes, I'm sure I want to go home, I answer his unspoken question. I'll call Stefan, he says. He wanders over to the side of the main entrance and makes a call. I try Anna again and her phone goes to voicemail. I don't trust myself to leave a message. I realize I could call Sawyer, but I have only a flimsy hold on my temper. Taylor could call him, but what would that achieve? It's not like Sawyer can physically remove Anna from the bar. Could he? Gray, behave. Taylor finishes his call and walks back to me, his expression grim. What the hell? Sir, the Gulf Stream is at Teterboro. It can be ready to fly in an hour. Good, let's go. You want to go back to the apartment? He asks. No, I don't need anything there. Do you need to go back there? No, sir. We'll go straight to the airport. In the car, I brood. I have a nagging suspicion that I'm behaving badly, but not as badly as my wife. Why can't she do what she says? Or let me know. Hyde is out for revenge, and I'm scared for her and for me if I lose her. Ooh, shit's about to get real, guys. <laughs> it really, really is. Oh, boy. So that means where he is locally, it's going to be just after midnight when he gets on that plane and starts to head back to Seattle. And if my memory serves me... Oh, shit. Oh, shit. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. And we'll find out how great on the next episode. So for the Couch Potato Mike YouTube channel, this is Couch Potato Mike reminding you that in the end we're all stories, so let's make them good ones. See you next time, guys.